Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV. Here we're discussing the topics that relate to the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the Brooklyn Appeal, and upcoming Chicago trial. We are now at day two before the Chicago trial. Today, we're going to be reading the motion that set from the motion rebuttal to the government's response to Defendant McDavid's motion to compel disclosure or in excuse me, or in the alternative, exclude videotape evidence. Here we go. Now this is for my students who are part of the R. Kelly Appeal TV coursework study. Um, I want you to keep an open mind and write an essay after reading the motion and tell me what you feel relates to your opinion in this motion. Based upon your criminal justice studies, I expect it to be emailed to me within one week of today. And today is August the 12th. So by this time, the Chicago trial should have been started. And then we're going to use that energy from the essays to create some type of dialogue and discussion here. So Within one week of today, you will receive credit for this essay and it will be worth 45 points to your grade. Thank you so much for all my internships and, and um, those who are part of the R. Kelly Appeal TV Criminal Justice Project, okay? Here we go, we're getting ready to start. The, we're getting ready to start the reading, the motion reading, here we go. United States District Court Northern District of ILLINOISEASTERN Division United States of America Case number 19 CR 567 versus Robert Sylvester Kelly aka R Kelly DERREL McDavid and Milton Brown aka June Brown Government's response to Defendant McDavid S motion to compel disclosure OR in the alternative exclude videotape evidence Defendant Daryl McDavid requests this court to compel the government to produce discovery about the chain of custody for Video 1, referenced in the indictment, from the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. R. 258. McDavid claims that gaps exist in the chain of custody such that the government will not be able to lay a foundation for the admission of Video 1 at trial. Alternatively, McDavid requests that the court exclude Video 1 from evidence. The issue as to video one in this case, however, is authentication, not chain of custody, and the government will be able to lay a sufficient foundation as to video one's authenticity to allow video one's admission into evidence. McDavid's motion should be denied as a result. I. Background. Video one consists of a recording of sexual activity between minor one and defendant Robert Kelly. The journalist provided the Cook County State's Attorney's Office with a copy of video one. The state's attorney's office also obtained copies of what are referenced in this case as videos two and three from an attorney representing an individual whom the government intends to call as a witness in the upcoming federal trial. A Cook County grand jury later brought criminal charges against Kelly based on video one. Kelly's state court trial took place in 2008. During the trial, according to McDavid's motion, the state court judge determined that the copy of Video 1 that the state's attorney's office had given to a defense expert was different from the copy of Video 1 that the state's attorney's office had received from the journalist. Hmm. R. 258 at 1 to 2. Minor 1 did not testify at the state court trial. The jury acquitted Kelly of the state charges. In approximately April 2019, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office turned over videos associated with Kelly to Homeland Security investigations of the Department of Homeland Security. The videos were on multiple VHS cassettes and CDs DVDs. The videos included several copies of Video 1. Some copies of Video 1 contained footage of sexual activity from start to finish. Other copies of Video 1 had a black screen or preamble at the beginning of the video before the footage of sexual activity began. Hmm. The videos HSI received also included copies of Videos 2 and 3 on VHS. T cassettes. The VHS cassettes provided by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office did not contain exhibit stickers or labels reflecting which copies of Video 1 had been used during state grand jury proceedings or the state court trial. 
So they didn't even, digitalized the so they did not even document the information back in 2008. I mean, they didn't document because these videos are said to be recordings that, oh my God, they're going to use this. They're going to literally, wow, 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 wow. Okay, let's keep listening. Cassettes. The VHS cassettes provided by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office did not contain exhibit stickers or labels reflecting which copies of Video 1 had been used during state grand jury proceedings or the state court trial. Page SI digitalized the videos on some of the VHS cassettes received from the Cook County State's Attorney's Office for purposes of the trial in this case. On August 5, 2022, counsel for McDavid went to an HSI office to review the videos collected by HSI from the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. A member of the prosecution team informed McDavid's counsel in an email exchange before they arrived at the HSI office of the condition in which HSI had received the videos and that it was not possible to tell which videos were used in the state grand jury or trial proceedings. Wow. Video 1, the subject of McDavid's motion, is referenced in two counts in the indictment in the instant case. Count 1 alleges that Kelly enticed minor 1 to engage in sexual activity for the purpose of producing a visual depiction of the conduct, namely Video 1, in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 2251. Count 5 alleges that Kelly and McDavid conspired to obstruct justice in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 371. The alleged ACTS of obstruction in Count 5 include actions Kelly and McDavid took to conceal Kelly's participation in in the conduct depicted in Video 1 with Minor 1. Argument A. Legal Standard. Rule 901 of the Federal Rules of Evidence provides that, O oh, satisfy the requirement of authenticating or identifying an item of evidence, the proponent must produce evidence sufficient to support a finding hmm. that the item is what the proponent claims it is. Huh. Fed. R. Evid. 901. Rule 901 specifies that evidence that satisfies the rule includes testimony of a witness with knowledge that an item is what it is claimed to be. ID. At 901. Now, didn't she say that it wasn't her on the tape in 2008? So why are we back here? It's like a nightmare or a bad penny that keeps showing up. Like it's outdated. Get over it. 2008, don't bring it back. The government will lay a proper foundation for the admission of video one in evidence. The item of evidence that needs to be authenticated in this case is what is referred to as video one. Video 1 is the name used to refer to the video footage Kelly made of Minor 1 and himself engaging in sexual activity on one occasion in or around 1998 or 1999 when Minor 1 was a child. The government will authenticate the video footage referred to as Video 1 through the testimony of Minor 1, a witness with knowledge of the recording because she was one of the participants in it. Now is this Minor 1 being coerced to testify from the prosecution side to say opposite, which is perjury of what was said in 2008, that it was not her on the tape. Please help me figure this out. Case 119 oh, no, no, CRO no, no, no. 56. No, we don't. Case 119 CRO 56. Let me see where we are. Nah. The item of evidence that needs to be authenticated in this case is what is referred to as Video 1. Video 1 is the name used to refer to the video footage Kelly made of Minor 1 and himself engaging in sexual activity on one occasion in or around 1998 or 1999 when Minor 1 was a child. The government will authenticate the video footage referred to as Video 1 through the testimony of Minor 1, a witness with knowledge of the recording because she was one of the participants in it. The government anticipates that Minor One will testify that she has reviewed a disc containing the recording referred to as Video One, and that the disc contains an accurate copy of the footage of the sexual encounter Kelly recorded on that occasion. This is sufficient authentication for the admission of Video One. See United States v. Secus, 7. McDavid claims that the government cannot establish a chain of custody for 
video 1, and therefore it will not be able to lay the foundation for video 1's admission in evidence. McDavid is incorrect. First, McDavid misapprehends the item that is subject of the charged crimes. The item identified as video 1 inch is the video footage of defendant Kelly's use of minor 1 engaging in sexually explicit conduct, rather than any VHS cassette on which it is stored. The government will authenticate the video footage through a witness with knowledge of its contents. Because the relevant evidence is the video footage, that is, the visual depiction of a minor engaging in sexually explicit conduct, and not the physical object on which the footage is stored. The government is not required to trace the handling of the object on which the recording was first placed as it passed from hand to hand in order to admit a copy of the footage into evidence. The video footage or visual depiction at issue in this case differs from a physical object involved in a crime, such as a gun, whose handling by various individuals must be traced to lay the foundation for its child admission into evidence. See United States v. Boyahian, 2012 WL 4094977 at N.13 Defendant's argument that chain of custody issues renders any evidence recovered from his digital media misses the point. At trial, the government is required to authenticate an object by making a prima facie showing sufficient to support a finding that the item is what the proponent claims it is. If the evidence is an object connected with the commission of a crime, the government must also establish chain of custody, which is sufficient proof that a reasonable juror could find that the item is in substantially the same condition as when it was seized. Quote. Closing parenthesis dot. McDavid incorrectly assumes that, to lay an appropriate foundation for admission, the government must show that the copy of Video 1 presented to the jury in this case must be the copy of Video 1 the state's attorney's office made from the video received from the journalist, mm -hmm. rather than the altered copy given by the state's attorney's office to the defense expert. But the issue in the instant case is whether Video 1, the item in evidence, is the visual depiction of the sexual activity between Kelly and Minor 1 that was recorded by Kelly in or around 1998 or 1999. The government need not trace, through the various VHS cassettes turned over by the state's attorney's office, which VHS cassette contains the specific copy of the recording that was made from the copy received from the journalist. Instead, Minor One will testify that Video One accurately depicts the sexual encounter Kelly recorded. Minor One's mother, who viewed a copy of Video One at issue in the state grand jury, is expected to testify that the Video One, marked as the exhibit in the instant trial, contains the same video footage as that which she viewed in the state grand jury. This is a sufficient foundation for the admission of Video One as to both counts one and five of the indictment. C. No additional discovery is required. McDavid claims that the government must present to him evidence of the chain of custody for Video 1 from the journalist through and including HSI's receipt of the VHS cassettes from the state's attorney's office. And evidence that the government does not intend to show to the jury the altered version of Video 1 given to the defense expert in the state case. As noted, however, given that the relevant evidence is the video depiction, known as Video 1, and not the physical object on which it resides, authentication through witnesses with knowledge of the contents, rather than a chain of custody analysis, such as that used for physical items, is what is relevant. The government has also already explained to McDavid's counsel the sequence and manner in which HSI received the materials from the state's attorney's office and no additional information should be needed as a result. 3. Conclusion. For the foregoing reasons, the government respectfully requests that the court deny Daryl McDavid's motion to compel disclosure, or in the alternative, exclude, Video 1. Res respectfully submitted. John R. L. A. U. S. C. H., Junior United States Attorney. By Skeptical Smiley Face, S. Brian Williamson, J. E. A. N. N. I. C. E. A. P. P. E. N. T. E. N. G. Elizabeth P. Okay. McDavid creates so the inaccurate what, impression in his... Let me see. So here's what I want you to do, class. I want you to look at the fact. Can they prove this is the actual tape that they presented in 2008? And if it can't be proven... Is this the reason why they asked to exclude the information from the case? Because that's going to make prosecution look bad once again. Because they didn't document 
the information that was in the 2008 trial. So they want to seal it so nobody can look at it. And number two, they stated in another motion that they were not going to promote child pornography in the, in the case. So would that be promoting child pornography to the jurors that has never seen the video footage? Those are the two things I want you to really, really focus on. And as you write your essay, I want you to think about putting another face to this celebrity. You know, use someone who may possibly be going through this because of a political reason that you may know. That's what I want you to do. I want you to focus on that. And as you write your essay, I want you to clearly title what your perspectives are. Perspective number one, two, three, four, et cetera. I want it to go like that. Because what's going to take place is this is going to be reviewed by a board that is specifically looking at the way that the government is handling the famous case of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So this will be documented and the best essay will be presented. So I really want you not to put a lot of pressure on yourself. I just want you to do your best. And R. Kelly Appeal TV supporters, thank you so much for being here and listening and commenting and giving the podcast your evaluation as well. You know, cause you are great commenters. You say what's on your mind. You're very respectful. You know, this is a professional platform and I'm so grateful that you honor that. So day two before the Chicago trial, this is going down in history on the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel podcast. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.